So tonight is the third and final public meeting for the Roosevelt Park Comprehensive Plan. It's been a year-long process, which is on this timeline here, to come up with a long-term vision for the park. So by long-term, about 10 to 15 years. So tonight, as a final meeting, we're unveiling the final comprehensive plan, but all of these materials will be available on the City Parks Department's uh, project website. So if you Google Roosevelt Park Comprehensive Plan, you can find all of this. Um, it's been a long road and one that uh, has yielded a really great park design. It keeps a lot of what's good with the park, some of the great well-loved courts and the building that gets a lot of use by the Boys and Girls Club, but switches up a few things. Uh, makes more space for soccer, retains baseball, adds a shade structure and renovates the playground that is very well loved today. Um, so if you can't make it tonight, please go online to the Parks Department's website and check out all these materials. There's a few big ideas at play here, and one of them is just elevating the basics, so making it a safer, more comfortable park, and that means introducing uh, better pedestrian lighting, better seating and benches, bike racks, all the sort of amenities that help a park just sort of hum from day to day. We've made a dedicated effort to go to the Boys and Girls Club across the street from the park uh, to host events with the students there. Uh, they've been really well attended and vibrant uh, activities where we've gathered votes on the sort of uh, amenities the students would like to see in the park. So that work has really made its way into the design. Hi, I'm Sophie Sauvé. I'm the Parks Comprehensive Planner for Burlington Parks Recreation and Waterfront. As a Parks Comprehensive Planner, I lead a team of three that oversee all the planning, design, and construction within our city parks. Um, tonight we're here for the Roosevelt Park Comprehensive Plan. It's a final, final public meeting for the planning process for the park. And essentially what a comprehensive plan is, is a roadmap into the future for the park. So it's not saying we're going to start over with the park. It's saying we know the park works well, but there are some people who are not included in that um, park, who are not, don't feel like they want to be in the park. And why is that? Or are there activities that have changed over time that are existing in the park and maybe there's amenities that don't need to be there anymore? Or maybe we want to just improve the amenities we have and make it more accessible to everybody. So this comprehensive plan has been going on for about a year and it's gone through three um, public meetings. In addition to meeting with individuals, organizations, we also had a community advisory committee that helped us um, identify people to talk to about the park. And we also um, worked um, into going into schools as well as the Boys and Girls Club to hear their opinions about the park because in the end, it's the kids that are using the parks the most um, and also they'll be using them throughout time. So at this final public meeting, we're presenting the proposed plan for the park. As I mentioned, it's a roadmap. It's not to say that tomorrow we're going to be going and digging up the entire park, but it means that we're identifying different priorities within the park to invest in into the future. And as we go through our capital planning process, we will look at the different amenities and include them in our capital planning. So that doesn't mean that we're deciding tonight that Roosevelt Park will have all these new amenities in the next couple of years. We're saying we're looking at Rosie, we're looking at Callahan, we're looking at all the 38 parks across our systems and seeing what we can integrate into the capital plan. So from, for the capital plan portion, that's city funding that goes towards improving our parks. But when we have this roadmap that's gone through a public process, we also line ourselves up in terms of improving amenities for funding. Sometimes there are grants that we can identify that really emphasize public process. So now that we've gone through this public process and we see a grant that's available, we will apply for that funding to make the, all these changes um, come true over time. Um, and also, as I said, we're a team of three, so we won't be doing all these changes all at once just because of capacity as well as budget. Um, I think that's, uh, sorry. So for the Roosevelt Park Comprehensive Plan, uh, some of the things that we understood that the community really wanted us to focus on was just improving basics. Basics meaning and adding benches, adding circulation, um, adding walkways, um, adding lighting, et cetera. Um, other things that we looked at was also there are some spaces that are underutilized in the park and that perhaps they could be home to another um, sport or activity or a passive activity that doesn't exist currently in our parks. Um, currently, the plan sits with um, adding in a skate 
area, which could be for skateboarding or, or roller skating, as well as a flex field, which could improve or add to the existing tennis courts, so more tennis space, but also it could be um, like an indoor, so not indoor soccer, but enclosed soccer area, or it could be used for volleyball or other, other activities we haven't necessarily identified. But with a flex field, we're suggesting an artificial turf so that the course wouldn't be worn through if people continue to use it, um, which is, it can be a maintenance challenge in, in other facilities. Um, also within this park, there, currently the park, or specifically the baseball diamond sits, um, and the bleachers sit outside of the park's property line, which was unknown when they constructed it. But now that we know um, that that's the case, when we go to make renovations or improvements to the baseball diamond, we would want to scoot it inside the park. And the plan is now to rotate it for a better um, sun situation for playing baseball. It's actually a better orientation. And that will also allow us to include soccer as a permanent facility there. The two sports would have to share the, the turf area, but um, the possibility would be there with the space that we would improve on that side of the park. A lot of people talked about uh, shade for the park. As we know, climate change is just making things hotter. There are trees in the park, but they're not great quality trees. So we would um, be adding in trees along the, all the roads, but also within the park to add some shade. And also um, people spoke about wanting a shade structure. Um, and not just a shade structure that could um, just provide shade, but also um, protection from the elements if there was rain. Because there are camps in the park that are held, the Boys and Girls Club are often here. And in the past couple of summers since COVID, we've had a tent in the park to help um, provide that, that shade. But this would be a permanent pavilion like you'd see at Oak Ridge Park or at North Beach, for example, and could be rented out and for gatherings and such. Um, I think those are the major elements that we're addressing within the park itself. And then at Rose Little Roosevelt, which is currently a playground, um, we heard a lot from the Boys and Girls Club older kids that they love going to Oak Ridge and swing on a big swing together. So we're proposing that there be structures for bigger kids. So it wasn't, it's not just you play on a playground to 12 and then you're done, but that it could extend the life of that kind of activity for kids, but also perhaps uh, have some exercise equipment for adults who go there often with their kids and don't necessarily just want to sit and watch their kid on a playground, but become active as well. So hopefully there's something for everybody in the park. We know that it's already a great space. We're just looking to improve it um, as we find funding and over time. Hi, I'm Cindy White. I'm the director for Burlington Park Recreation and Waterfront. I'm going to talk a little bit today about how do we fund all these amazing projects that we do in our parks. Well, we have a, several different funding sources. Um, one of them, Penny, people have heard about, and that's Penny for Parks. And that is money that our taxpayers contribute to improve and beautify the parks in our system. We receive a little over $500,000 every year that we put um, towards our parks and our playgrounds. Um, some are specific projects. Sometimes it's making sure that we have good benches and picnic tables in all of our parks. And this um, project right here down the line could be partially funded by Penny for Parks. And we also do community requests as part of Penny for Parks. Every year we set aside $40,000 for ideas that the community has for small changes that they would want in their parks. So somebody could take a piece of this and say, boy, I would love to put in a community request to make more benches happen at Roosevelt Park or more picnic tables. Sometimes we get larger requests that are beyond the $40,000, but we put those in our capital plan and we look to try to fund them over time. Um, other funding sources that we have that we are able to use in our park improvements, one of them is impact fees. Impact fees that we get whenever there's developments that happen across the city. Those funds really need to be spent near where that development happened or it could be a regional park. So I'll give an example is recently we renovated Champlain Street Park and there were two developments right along that corridor that had been done. So we were able to use the impact freeze from the development of those two apartment buildings to improve Champlain Street Park. 
We could also use impact fees for those developments for regional parks. For example, we only have one ice arena in the city. So, and Letty Park is not only home to our ice arena, but also we do a large soccer programs there. So that would be an example of using impact fees for uh, a regional park. So again, it doesn't have to be spent right in the neighborhood. Roosevelt Park is very much a neighborhood. So using impact fees to Roosevelt Park, we would look to, is anything being developed around that park that we could use those impact fees? So there's two examples of capital dollars that we have. Another one is we sometimes bond as a city. The city may choose to bond for improvements. And we have done recently several improvements in our parks with bond dollars. We used playground surfacing was one of the items we identified in the bond that we wanted to do improvements. So we used that playground surfacing money at Oak Ledge Park, and then we also used it at Champlain Street Park, was another funding source for that project. A third source, excuse me, a fourth source is the city has annual capital dollars that they set aside for capital improvements. Those are really competitive because as you can imagine, there's capital improvements need to happen in facilities, to our roads, our sidewalks, and also to our parks. So that's a pretty limited amount of dollars, but it is available there. We also have an incredible Parks Foundation. The Parks Foundation of Burlington raises private dollars for improvements to our park. They're the ones that made all the many little pause places along the way possible. They raised uh, money from individual donors. They raised money from the University of Vermont Medical Center for the fitness stations. So there are some examples of private dollars enhancing our park system. And that pretty much wraps up generally how we fund these larger improvements to our products. Oh, I remembered one more, and that is a significant one, grants. We could always apply for grants, and generally those are matching ones. So maybe a 50-50 match, we raise 50% of the dollars, and then we get from a grant, whether it's a state grant, a federal grant, a local grant, we can use those also for capital improvements in our parks. So there's a little financial lesson for you on how we make all these improvements to our parks happen, but it takes time. We put them in order. And remember that Penny for Parks community request. If you would like a small improvement done to your neighborhood park, look on our parks page, enjoyburlington.com. Looks for the Penny for Parks information down at the bottom of the website, and you can apply for improvements to your neighborhood park. So I frequent Roosevelt Park on a regular basis. I go there once or twice a day, every single day. And the thing about this process is that it takes away the possibility for the community to communicate with each other. So they present ideas and they say, if you have other ideas, you can write them down. But what happens is somebody might have a really good idea that everybody else would really like, or a good chunk of people would really like, but they don't know that because they're the only person writing it down. So when it gets considered, it's the only person, the person who wrote it down is the only one who, who had that idea. But if more people heard it, the way that you'd have an actual meeting as opposed to just write down what is the favorite of what they proposed. And this is, in my opinion, this is the, the least way to get the community to actually have what the community wants. And this is the best way to get just what the city thinks is the best thing for the members, as opposed to actually the city members saying what they want for the city. So. Oh, this is Wendy. Um, I live on the north side of Roosevelt Park on St. Louis Street, and my grandchildren really like Little Rosie, as their father did before them. Um, and I'm disappointed that there's no swing sets in the new picture and also that there's this whole adult teen fitness equipment in Little Rosie. Adults and teens have the whole huge Roosevelt Park. Why do they get a piece of Little Rosie on top of that? And also when I've been there with my grandchildren who are um, now three and four and a half, older kids just... I don't know, it's just a different vibe in the park when they're there, um, and there just seems to be an element of, um, I, I don't want to, not violence, but um, just this other intensity that's happening, and uh, I just wish that there wasn't a piece that brought 
older kids in when I've got like toddlers and really little kids who just want to do their sweet little play thing and not um, get into a violent ping pong match or something. So that is a concern I have. Uh -huh.